Hi everyone, this is video six from that little guy in the corner series. Well, guess what video six is about? The title is To Buzz or Not To Buzz. That is the option. And just in case this is a little clear because I just moved the mic, this video six is called to buzz or not to buzz. That is the option. I know there's been so much controversy about when should someone play the mouthpiece. In fact, you might say it's the buzz around the globe right now in the trombone community, or it has been in the past several months from people making their views clear um, on what they think about it, whether they think it should happen or they think it shouldn't happen. And let's say different strokes for different folks. For example, I don't refer to mouthpiece buzzing as mouthpiece buzzing. I call it play the mouthpiece, resonate the mouthpiece, vibrate the mouthpiece. Buzz has a certain particular quality in even the word buzz that I think, first of all, it's very easy to see why someone would call it buzzing the mouthpiece. But if I think resonate, it relates to the trombone more that way. And I've also found that I make sure that I'm putting the mouthpiece exactly on my lips when I play the mouthpiece exactly the way when I play the trombone. And many people do not do that and they don't even know they're doing it. In fact, they think they're keeping it the same. And I went through a series of experiments a few years ago with colleagues of mine and it proved to be the case that they were not putting it in the same location on their embouchure playing the mouthpiece and the horn were quite different, actually. Um, does that make any difference? I don't know. For me, it did. So I try to line them up. If I move the mouthpiece a little bit in a slightly different location, maybe a little lower, I get more buzz in it. And I think sometimes it could be useful especially if my lips are feeling unresponsive, thinking buzzy gets it very, very stimulated and therefore the response gets better because the vibration is more activated when air hits the embouchure. So it's a very personal thing, whether it's useful or not useful. There are some fantastic world-class top of the notch players that think no way play the mouthpiece. For them, they don't find it useful. And some of them, not all of them, but some of them um, like to say that flat out, it's not good for anybody, <laughs> which is totally ridiculous, which means that that person really doesn't have a lot of varied experience working with people or working with people who need to find a way to make it work. So it brings up very interesting things about pedagogy, doesn't it? If you're a staunch believer in mouthpiece buzzing and think this is the way to do it, here are the exercises, here's when to do it, here's when not to do it, and then you pass that on to students, Hopefully the students will know that they have to actually make decisions for themselves at some point and realize if that's working, fabulous. If it's not, maybe they have to readjust in their practice diet how much they play the mouthpiece. So it's an option. It's not really, I mean, the question is, is it useful? Is it, not, is it not useful? Some people have a very set thing about when it's useful. 
they'll say, when I can't play a passage and I go to the mouthpiece, it's usually better. I've known a lot, a lot of people who can play their mouthpiece, for example, in the high range, and they can't play it on the horn in the high range. And of course, the reverse. What does that say? It says that embouchure setups and the way they function with the resistance of the horn are different for different people for a variety of reasons. For a variety of reasons. Um, some of the benefits of playing the mouthpiece I think are very clear, uh, to me anyway. Even though if I'm feeling stiff, playing the mouthpiece does not loosen me up. Unless I play it half covered with a finger, something, play it half covered and play low. So in that way, with its half covered, I can play the pedal F. And that can start to loosen me up a little bit. And when people say loosen me up a little bit, what does that mean? Um, it means that the embouchure feels like it can have some mobility, where before it felt like maybe it was just getting stuck and couldn't move. And sometimes that feeling can happen from here, which I call the, the pucker, or it can actually happen when in here the hinge joints feel too tight. So I think playing low with it half covered, doing glisses going down, can really, really help. Not at a real loud volume, but a volume that's comfortable. But then again, you might be the kind of person that playing loud on the mouthpiece really is the answer. One thing I've noticed for all you mouthpiece enthusiasts is that it was... When I was doing a master class a couple weeks ago, I realized that every time I asked someone to play something on the mouthpiece, it would always be glissed. They never went back and re-tongued something on the mouthpiece. Even if the exercise that I asked them to play the mouthpiece on was articulated, they would go back and gliss it. Now, I have also found that's very useful, but I've also found it's very useful to play the mouthpiece articulated because you can hear your releases so clearly. And if your air support is weak, meaning it's actually not doing its job in maintaining its posture so the note doesn't drop, you will hear it immediately on the mouthpiece. <laughs> So I have found articulating on the mouthpiece very useful. As a matter of fact, I think these days, what I realize is people think to play something on the mouthpiece, it means gliss. Where years ago, I remember Stephen Zelmer, who was a Chicago protege of Klein Ammer and Jacobs and Chris Afoli, um, he was principal trombone in the Minnesota Orchestra, and I studied with him. And for those of you who don't know, that's who started the Zelmer competition on his deathbed, actually. Very interesting story. But he would always play the mouthpiece articulated. <laughs> when we, would, we never worked on Arbans. We worked on Koprash. We worked on um, Pasquale Bona rhythmical articulations, Tyrell, things like that. We never worked on Arbans. But a lot, there's a lot of articulation work in the books that I just mentioned. And he'd always tongue them. Never, I don't even ever think I heard him gliss on the mouthpiece at all, ever. Or slur, which the mouthpiece proves a slur is really a fast gliss. 
So I think that glissing on the mouthpiece is a fantastic thing, okay? It's also important to keep a, a close lookout on how much pressure we use on the mouthpiece. Because sometimes that's different than the horn. the pressure in check. It usually makes it so you don't have to use as much pressure on the mouthpiece if you actually gliss because the glissing keeps it a little bit of a di at a distance from what it doesn't. I can't press as much when I gliss. Maybe some people do. <laughs> Also, of course, what's great about that is you can feel, and I felt a little bit, where sometimes there's a part of the vibration that doesn't want to continue. And in that way, you can go back and slowly fill in the gaps. So, it's up to each person to think about whether to play the mouthpiece or whether not to play the mouthpiece. But I don't believe that any school of thought should keep you from discovering what you personally need, which is absolutely vital. You have to discover what you need. You don't have to stick to a school of thought, even if you at one time were, this is the way to play and that's the only way to play. You know what? Things change. And as I've said before, change in order to continue to exist. And in this, being a, a brass player, for many times, it might be early on in someone's career where they feel like they need to play their mouthpiece a lot, and all of a sudden it takes a change. And then that can reverse, meaning that sometimes players played it, played it uh, a lot, and then they don't want to do it, or rather, they didn't play it, and then they feel, wow, they need to ha actually have that extra bit of musculature that the mouthpiece playing will provide. But watch the mouthpiece pressure as it goes into the different ranges because sometimes that can be a literal sticking point. Happy experimenting and discovering.